God has reserved certain victories for his women warriors. This was a statement that my friend and author Lee Grady wrote in one of the many books about kingdom women. Recently, while I was reading one of his books called Fearless Daughters of the Bible, this statement stuck out to me and reverberated in my spirit, and I just couldn't get away from it. God has reserved certain victories for his women warriors. You know, this statement begs the question, who are these women warriors? First of all, I want to say I am not a feminist at least not in the modern sense of the word. I am, however, a believer that women have equal value and worth and possibilities. I believe in what you might call biblical equality. You know, as I pondered my own journey and had, and how at one time I actually believed that it wasn't safe for a woman to speak and how my healing and freedom came when I was introduced to the truth. I realized that my past experiences and perceptions were not necessarily truth. They were based on unhealthy and destructive patterns of living. Oh yes, my experiences actually did happen. I did see my mom getting beaten up by my dad. I did experience fear and confusion and emotional trauma over never really being sure what was acceptable. However, my interpretations of these experiences were inaccurate. The conclusion I came to was born out of my own pain and distorted perceptions of truth. You know, I wrote in my book, Let the Real You Step Forward Now, that if unchallenged, your distorted perceptions can lead to deception. Sadly, this is what's happened with many who have been taught that women warriors were just a myth. That being feminine means being quiet or passive or weak. You may be like many women who have believed this lie and have felt held back from actually pursuing what's deep inside your heart, the desires and dreams that God has given you. You know you're meant for more but you just don't know what it looks like. Well, from what I read in scriptures, the mandate in Genesis is for both men and women to rule and reign and subdue. If indeed God has reserved certain victories for his warrior women or women warriors, then he would expect women to be fierce. He would expect women to be courageous in the face of opposition. What comes to your mind when you hear the word warrior? I think about words like fight, fierce, focused, courageous, fearless, victory, weapons, faith-filled, dangerous, determined. To help paint a picture of what God's women warriors may look like, let me introduce you to four stories of ordinary women who were fierce yet feminine. Are you ready for this? Now, at least three of these women were recorded as having crushed the enemy's head. I know it's a gruesome image, but doesn't that describe what a warrior actually does? do damage to the enemy? These women were ordinary, just like me and you. And some were even unnamed women. If you want to do further reading on this, I'll give you the scriptures, but I'm just going to touch on them today so that you can get an overview and a taste so that you can understand what it means to be a warrior woman. You're also going to learn a bit about What are some ways that you can begin to step into a place so that God can begin to equip you to become a warrior woman and maybe be one of those warrior women that he's looking for, those certain victories? So the first one is found in Judges 4, 17 to 21. And it's a story about a woman named J.L. And it says that J.L. drove a tent peg in the head 
of the commander of the enemy army named Sisera. And this action, of course he died, <laughs> resulted in Israel being delivered from the enemy. You can listen to more about JL in a video that I did at another time called, What Was She Thinking? So you can check that out at the end of this video. The next story is in Judges 9, 53 to 54. And it talks about, it says a certain woman. This woman is unnamed. They just call her a certain woman. It says that she dropped a rock on the head of a terrorist named Abimelech and it crushed his skull. The enemy was disturbed. He had been pursuing the children of Israel and he had already murdered a number of men and women, including his own family members. And they find themselves now in this tower, locked up in this tower, about a thousand men and women. And Abimelech is outside trying to get in. And it says that this woman dropped a rock. It says a millstone dropped on his head and crushed his skull. Now, it's interesting because he was actually injured and he said to his armor bearer, kill me with a sword now because I don't want people to find out that I was actually killed by a woman. But that's the damage that a woman warrior can do. As a result, Abimelech died and the army disbanded and they were protected from the terrorist and the enemy. The next story is in 2 Samuel 20, verses 14 to 21. And this woman is called a wise woman. Now, this is a story where Joab, the commander of King David's army, was going through the towns of Israel looking for a man who had rebelled against King David. His name was Sheba. And in doing so, they were just tearing up the towns. Some destruction was happening. And as a result, there was a lot of things that were being disrupted in the search for this man who was on the run. This woman, she says to Joab, hey, Joab, come here. She calls him aside and starts to talk to him, starts to have a discussion, a dialogue. She'll listen. I am one who is peace-loving and faithful in Israel. But why are you damaging God, what belongs to the Lord? Why are you going around damaging, destroying things in the city and belongings that don't belong to you? They belong to the Lord. And Joab said, listen, I don't want to destroy these things either. But we have got to find this man, Sheba, who is a rebellious man against King David. So this wise woman said, listen, Joab, what if we throw over the head of Sheba to you? Will you go? Will you leave us alone? He said, absolutely. The wise woman goes back, it says, she persuades, she, she persuades the people and they cut off the head of Sheba and throw it over the wall to Joab. And then they're on their way. They're going on their way. Wow. Here's a woman. She used her words to communicate it. She reasoned with him. And then they actually cut off the head of the enemy and threw it over the wall. And was again responsible for bringing safety and peace to the walls of Jerusalem, of the city as well and her people. Now, the last story that you may be really familiar with this one is in the book of Esther. And particularly in Esther 7, it talks about where Esther's bravery to go before the king because she had heard from her uncle Mordecai that there was a man named Haman in the king's court who was plotting to kill the Jews. And of course, her being a Jew, her life was also on the line. So even though it was a great risk for her to approach the king, she did so with strategy and with skill. She approached the king and brought her case before him. And in doing so, she won favor with him, but also she exposed the enemy's plan and was responsible, her bravery was responsible for sending the enemy, Haman, to be impaled at the very pole that he had set up to kill her uncle Mordecai. So here, Queen Esther, Esther not only helped deliver Israel, 
but the spoils and the riches of Haman, her enemy, were given to her and her family. Now, you can hear these stories and think, well, they're barbaric and awful. They're just stories of the past. But I want to suggest to you that these are not just to be obscure stories written of women long ago that have no bearing on today. But they're examples of what God designed you, woman of God, to be. Feminine yet fierce. A warrior woman. I'm talking to you. My friend Lee Grady, who is the author I mentioned earlier, says that the devil is actually afraid of what will happen when the Christian women discover their true identity. I totally believe that. Perhaps you're like most women and think of the movie, think of the word, when you think of the word woman warrior, you think of Wonder Woman. Well, even in the Wonder Woman movie, there's a scene at the beginning where little Diana, the Wonder Woman when she was a little girl, sees this beautiful sword and asks her mom. In fact, here's a sword right here. I have a sword. She asks her mom, who would wield it? And her mom replies, well, only the fiercest among us even could. But then she added, but that's not you, Diana. Wow. Has someone ever told you that you didn't have what it take to do something? Now, later on, Diana's mom gives her permission to train, but she goes to her trainer and says this. She says, Diana must never know the truth about what she is. And I believe this is what the enemy wants to keep you from knowing as well. The truth about who you really are. As a woman, you are created to do damage to the enemy, and it doesn't mean you have to take up physical weapons and get aggressive, although that might happen. You know, in the book of Genesis, it says that the seed of woman will crush the head of Satan. And we know that Jesus was that seed. But I believe that that is why the enemy is so adamant to oppress and keep women down, because he knows the danger and the damage that we bring when we rise up in the fierceness and the fear of the Lord to do what the Lord calls us to do. To be a warrior woman does mean that you need to know who you are, a daughter of the king. And you need to know what you are, a warrior woman who is fierce yet feminine. And it also means you need to be willing and available to engage in warfare when the time comes. Now, just like Diana's mom said to her, have you believed a lie that this is not you? Well, the good news is that the weapons of your warfare are not conventional. You may never need to have to pick up a real sword or actually put a tent peg through someone's head. However, there are, there are weapons that God wants you to pick up and use that are right at your fingertips, but also that you may have overlooked. And one particular weapon I want to share with you today in the context of three things that are actually mentioned in Scripture as three weapons of warfare. One is prayer, praise, and proclamation. Now, what do all of these have in common? Yes, they all require that you use your voice. Your voice is a weapon that God is meant to bring destruction to the enemy. It is also a, a, a weapon to be used to bring good. In Psalm 29, it talks about the voice of God and the beautiful things that God can do and of course, we know that he created the heavens and the earth by the spoken word, by using his voice, by speaking. And in Psalm 29, it talks about how the voice of God can shatter things, can bring about change and transformation. And that is what you are meant to do as well. 
using your voice. And that's why I have, I have put together a three-day training in February for you to learn all about how to use your voice in a way that's going to bring about the purposes of God in and through your life. Whether it be to write a book of your story, to share on a stage, on a virtual platform, in a communication, negotiations, and persuasion, whatever it might be. Your voice is a weapon that God wants you to use for good. And to find out how God may want to use you in this next year, join me for this three-day training called The Voice of Kingdom Women, where you, like the wise women of Esther, can learn how to communicate in a way that influences situations, brings solutions, and where others listen and you learn how to stand with courage, speak with confidence and clarity, so God can use you to be one of the warrior women he's looking for and has reserved a certain victory for you to accomplish. I look forward to seeing you there.